Hey gamers, have you been playing thousands of hours of League of Legends or Dota or games like PUBG and you're wondering how you can put all that money and time you invested into it into something that's actually productive? Well, here's 10 millionaire life hacks that we learned from playing video games. That's right, video games. If you want to get more content like this, make sure you subscribe to this channel, The David Wong Entrepreneur Show. Click the button below, click the bell, so you get all the latest notifications of all the coolest videos from this channel. That said, let's get on with the show. So today, we have Kevin Lee. He's the CEO of Brigade Media. He's generated over $65 million in revenue through his marketing company. And he also is a avid gamer. He's at the top 20 on the server for PUBG. And what are some of the top 10 life hacks that you've learned from video games? Let's start with the very basic. The first one is leveling and gaining EXP. Everyone knows in games you have to level. You have to fight, gain XP, get more levels, learn more skills, and your character becomes stronger. It doesn't really matter which game you play. Um, some, sometimes you level inside the game, you go from level 1 to level 18 in League of Legends. Mm -hmm. Or you just play the same game more often, and you get more experience as a player, and then you can start shitting on the new players, <laughs> which is a very fun part of the game. <laughs> that concept is exactly the same way in life, in business, and in, even in career. You find a job, and as you work, stay in the career longer, you get more experience, and then you can move up uh, in job position. Let's say you started as a entry-level accountant, a bookkeeper. As you work more, you become a CPA, you become a tax accountant. You get the idea. You stay in the business, you operate over a period of time, you become better at it, and you start making more money. So the concept of leveling up and experience same thing. Right. So if you don't so if you don't grind, for example, if you don't do any of that, you get no experience, you're gonna stay at a low level. And then low levels means what? Low skills and low ability to make more money. Exactly. Which leads us to the next one, which is skills, skill trees, and items. That's actually a very good analogy for picking the right industry or picking the right sector. Right? A lot of kids these days graduate from university, they don't really know what they want to do. And this is the very first thing that they have to do, just like in any game. You want to choose where you want to go. You want to choose what kind of skill you want to learn so that you can become better at it and go down that path. Know your role. How does that work in, in real life and in a game? Know your role, it's more about knowing what you're good at. Going back to the marketing example I gave you, right? Let's say if you are a strategist, you want to provide consulting services for your company or for your client's company. You have to know what you have to do rather than concentrating on the executional level things like, oh, how do I work this AdWords campaign? What kind of keywords I'm looking for? You're more looking at the bigger picture. You're looking at brand positioning, competitor research. You're looking at the next year uh, projections, you're looking at the product mix. Right. So knowing your role will allow you to know what you have to focus on, uh, concentrate on, and spend your effort on. Right. Just like knowing whether you're going to be a jungler or ADC or tanking or support. Right? Exactly. Even going more in depth, the type of jungler you are, right? Do you want to be ganking more or do you want to be invading the enemy jungle more or do you want to be counter ganking more? So next one is money and gold. So that's very obvious. In business, we need to make money, get more gold. So how does that apply in the, in the game? You get more items through money, right? The more money you have, the better items you can buy. Uh, it's the same thing in business. The more money you're able to accumulate, you can choose to use that money to scale your business. Having more money just opens up more opportunities, both in real life and in game. Next one is knowing the enemy. How does that work? This applies to your competition. Right? If you own a business, you have to know what their next move is. You have to know what kind of trend they're going on. I work in digital marketing, so I have to know at all times what new digital marketing firms pop up here, pop up there. What is their newest package uh, that they're offering to their clients. So I know exactly what I can offer. Just like you have to know what the cooldown times are, what items they have on hand, you know, exactly. what abilities they have, their range. 
right? The next one is know the map. This is actually quite similar uh, to knowing your enemy. Knowing your enemy is a little bit more specific, where you're trying to look at the enemy's cooldown, you know, what they're doing, what kind of skill they leveled up, what kind of items they have, and that translates to what your competition is doing. Knowing the map, you're looking at the market, right? You're looking at what people are doing in the market. In the game, you're trying to watch out for ganks, if the other team is pushing for objectives, or if you're in PUBG, you have to know where all the players are. In real life, you're just looking at what the competition is doing overall. Economy, economic factors, political factors, and knowing that will just always put you ahead of the competition. Now we're gonna talk about some strategies in games. The first one is don't quit while you're ahead. Don't quit while you're ahead. So that's about pushing your advantage. Let's say in League, most of your team members are half HP mm -hmm. uh, or close to full HP. Well, you're not gonna go all recall back to base and buy item and then come back out because that's when the people are gonna respawn. You wanna push for objectives. You wanna get more turrets. You wanna get that free dragon. You wanna get that free baron. Right? Same thing in business. If you're ahead of the competition or if you're ahead in the market, you don't just sit back, keep all the money in your bank and do nothing. You want to reinvest that into the same market opportunity and try to scale, try to capitalize on your advantage. Next strategy is knowing when to quit. Knowing when to quit, the exact opposite of the other one, right? So it's about not picking a team fight you can't win. You don't want to fight a fed assassin, let's say Zed, when you're a half HP ADC. That's just not going to work. You have to run. It's the same thing when you're doing business. You have to choose your battles. You have to choose what kind of products to, to sell, what kind of products to push, and what kind of products or services to drop. Let's say you offer a certain type of service. You're fairly good at it, but then a new competition where someone else does it so much better for a cheaper price, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to compete with that person by dropping how much you know, you're, you're going to charge for your product because that will eat your margins and you end up losing money. Right. You want to do something else, right? Don't fight these price wars. These are the battles that you don't want to engage in. Next one is don't just charge in, have a plan. You know, a lot of people who are in a league who are, you know, who are stuck in silver, stuck in gold is when they get ahead or they think they get ahead, they just run in and feed or they run it out mid. Very bad. People do that in business all the time. There's a lot of opportunities in market that come and go. And there's a lot of people that blindly follow a trend, cryptocurrency, blockchain, that sort of stuff, big data back then, uh, cross-border e-commerce, right? There's all these big words that people think it's just full of money and they can just go in and do whatever and they can make money. Well, that's not the case. You have to know what you're doing. You have to have a very actionable plan. Don't rush in whenever you smell something good. And the last one is practice makes perfect. It applies for everything. You play a game long enough, you get good at it. You do business long enough, you get good at it. There's a lot of business locally from where we are, right? Uh, restaurants, predominantly, you know, they open up a business, they stay afloat for maybe six months to a year, and then they disappear. Right. They go bankrupt. For you to be a successful restaurant or any business, they have to keep going where we're from three years or so, and then they become very good at it. They become very stable. Let's say if you played in season one in League of Legends, you were good back then, and if you haven't played until what is the season now, season nine, well, you're a noob. You don't know anything. Other people are going to destroy you, whatever lane you go to. Also, same concept applies to getting good at one character instead of playing all the characters. You have to master your craft. So focus and get mastery over a specific market, a specific skill, or a specific industry. Exactly. All right, thanks, Kevin, for your wise gaming <laughs> advice that we can use to make more money. Thank you so much for having me, David. Thanks for watching the David Wong Entrepreneur Show. If you like this channel, make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you soon in the next show.